PCNZ watching. Battle of the sexes. Is that better? So before I get into the debate, I just want to express a little bit of appreciation for the organisation that's gone into this weekend. I've been around the Porsche Club on and off for 25 years, and looking around here, it looks like hopefully you all have, because boy, aren't we old. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you what, I look down here and I see someone who's ancient, and that's Graham. <laughs> Graham Lister has been doing this for longer than I have been alive, and I'm nearly 60. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if people know Graham's history, but Graham used to be a, a hostess around the late 1800s for the Montgolfia brothers on hot air balloons. Um, and he carried those skills forward and the organisational and hospitality and catering skills. And a lot of you don't realise, I mean, in all seriousness, thank you, Graham, I've, I've done these Tower Honor events with you. He was so incensed one year that the first mid-engine Boxster came along, you ran into it. <laughs> <laughs> but today really did show what sacrifice Graham made. He came to me last night and he said, we, we, I want you to come with me, we're going to leave at 9.30 to go to Moose Lodge because, you know, he's organising it, he's selflessly done this for, for eight decades. And uh, I thought, Graham, I thought, why the fuck at 9.30? And then I realised when we got there, and you guys don't know this, but Graham cooked lunch. <laughs> So the, um, the format tonight, we've got two teams, one with, one without. Um, as I mentioned at lunchtime, back in the, in the simpler days when there were only two genders and you didn't have to choose, it was what you popped out with. Um, it's, uh, it's quite an honour to have been invited to, to MC this and I think part of this is because uh, the, uh, the club committee know that I'm very much in touch with my feminine side. Um, I do admit to crying at weddings, but actually only my own. Um, I go to the zoo to feed the little rabbits to the tigers. And when there's a sale on the Bend On shop in Silverdale, like the other girls, I'm there for hours looking at the underwear. <laughs> So I'd like to just quickly, just quickly introduce the teams. Um, I find the the women's team somewhat uh, daunting. I had to move, I had to move the fines bucket actually because I was scared they'd think it was a cauldron and have a coven meeting. <laughs> Ways, I'm a bit I'm a bit scared of them so Michelle Neville I've known for a very long time and I'm terrified at her accuracy and her attention to detail and you know she's I think she's going to be awesome on this team Lisa I haven't known for very long at all but I am getting to know her and I'm terrified of ending up in one of her poems <laughs> and Anne I'd like to know better but I'm terrified of her husband <laughs> On the guys team, we've got uh, Ashley, who I've known for quite a while now. This is where it comes back down to this, um, actually I'll start with Dan to be honest. Yeah. Um, the, the guys team, we've got one from Auckland and two from Wellington. And that rather surprised me because I didn't know there were two members in Wellington. <laughs> Forward after their name in brackets, they put she slash her, which is part of this gender definition that we have these days. Dan put in brackets me slash mine. 
Um, Gavin apparently is an IT guy, and after his he put one slash zero. <laughs> and Ashley put who slash what. <laughs> My big disappointment tonight is neither team has tried to bribe me. So this is, this is actually going to be quite a fair run. The way it will work is it'll be ladies first, because before this gender definition shit hit us, that's what we did. Um, Michelle will, will start, and then we'll flip over to, I think is Dan the first speaker on the um, with side? Um, and then we'll, we'll go alternating. I'll be giving them the microphone. Um, they'll stand up while they're talking. We need to show them some respect. You, you do, anyway, I'm not going to. Um, and uh, we'll get through this. They'll at least have five minutes. Um, if they run over, I'm going to... Spoon on the side. I'm going to pick this up and make some noise with it. And in six minutes, I'm going to hit them in the face with it. Um, so we should keep it... Keep you not away from your dessert for more than half an hour. And then at the end, I'll sort of sum up. And as I said at lunchtime, I would look to you for raised hands of a vote, but I will ignore that and make the decision myself. <laughs> so I'd like to, without any more um, rambling on, Michelle is so nervous. Uh, she didn't have to go have a nervous pee like all the guys did, <laughs> but I think that's a girl thing. Um, so I'll hand the microphone to my dear friend Michelle Neville and see what she's got to say about our argument that is, women make better Porsche owners than men. Listen. 
listening. <laughs> spokesman of our team, she will tell you about the passion of being a Porsche owner. How, if it wasn't for a woman, there may not have been a Porsche. <laughs> and me, I have a tractor, digger, mini dump truck, ride on mower, and I've driven a McLaren. Oh, okay, it is Paul likes to own a McLaren though, so. I know. <laughs> the talking stick. <laughs> observation over many years in this club that a man reaches an age when he needs a Porsche. Midlife crisis or childhood dream, it's hard to tell, but when he gets it, it becomes his car. <laughs> Does it matter that the wife's given up the kitchen? Excuse me, that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> The wife might prank it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, statistically, men represent 71% of the car accidents to a woman's 29%. Driving practices, not use their safety belts, drive while impaired with alcohol, and speed. Yeah. Yeah. Over the last 45 years, the number of male deaths are more than twice the number of female crash deaths. You can't argue with the statistics, boys. And the wife might dent the car. In my house, you admit that to you. I have never dented a Porsche. In my house, I have a cause. <laughs> Order on the means tape. <laughs> His wife is now def definitely driving the car. <laughs> Speeding tickets. I'd like to produce Exhibit A.
Ủa thế? Rồi mua hiền như Con yên thù Ladies and gentlemen I would first like to thank Michelle for her valiant attempt to put a case forward for the women's team. The fact being, ladies and gentlemen, poor play, poor play. Women do not make better Porsche owners than men. And our team will substantiate that with facts and figures. None of this mandy, handy woman feeling <laughs> introduced all of her team and what they feel about Porsches. She didn't mention what women in general feel, so they're only giving the view of three women here. <laughs> we will give the view of all men. have owned multiple Porsches in their time and have had several women <laughs> and wives <laughs> will be able to justify our case with genuine sex and feelings, not a wine box. Ladies and gentlemen, we will talk about the driving, the makes and models, fuel, yes, that goes into a car, <laughs> registration and paperwork and finances that go into maintaining cars, <laughs> the research, the studies, the knowledge that you need to be able to buy a car and then maintain that car. <laughs> to park a <laughs> Men know how passion should be for a car, especially a Porsche. We know how to take care of them. We know that they are a work of art and deserve to be cherished. <laughs> And we admire the engineering brilliance <laughs> that men only understand. <laughs> Again, I state the fact that women do not make better Porsche owners than men. And to conclude, my esteemed colleagues here will justify exactly what I have just said to you and I'm afraid, ladies, clarify that you were wrong. Oh. Rightly said by our Master of Arms, that Gavin is an IT man, he is a facts man and he will clarify the facts for you tonight. And then we have Ash, who is a passionate man who will tell you everything you need to know about Porsches and the passion of Porsches right through to con... <laughs> the colour, yes. Yeah. So that the woman will understand. Because when you ask a woman about a Porsche, what do they say? What is the colour? a woman what kind of Porsche she has. What does she say? Yeah. It's red. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, how can women be better Porsche owners than men when they have that approach? <laughs> Master <laughs> Adams. We are clear and precise and we stay within our time. <laughs> well I think Dan was very clear that black Porsches matter. Um, uh, 
so I'd like to hand over to the small but perfectly formed Anne Story. Yeah. 
Me and I would have to reach around to get their toupee off. <laughs> Now, 
I don't think there are any men in Afghanistan. So I really don't know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
wash. He's dark at the top, leading to lean and lean's torso. He begins to <laughs> his legs, pumping slightly as he tries to reach the centre of the ring. This creates a sensation that only increases as he feels his way down, perhaps pulling the lock to his hips at a 993. <laughs> before working on the seductive skirt, such as the fits and high legs. Eventually, reaching the front, he slides down the beautiful rounded panels of three five six. <laughs> Reminiscent of firm thighs and moving down the bonnet, suggestively sloping beam. Polishing, polishing, polishing. I'm enjoying this, but I'm not sure where it's going. <laughs> She might suggest a little to the right or the left. Sounds like my wife! And fumbling over the bonnet latch, which could have revealed a Pandora's box of excitement. <laughs> he has predictably retraced his path back to the rear end. Once <laughs> he smudges as he goes, and then, as always, gets stuck with the same old conundrum. How can I make my pipes better? <laughs> Porsche owner would have flipped a clean clock efficiently over her model, spent more time polishing the right spots to great satisfaction. <laughs> Not bothering to open the bonnet, it's always fully loaded and ready for fun. <laughs>
topics my colleagues have, have touched on. I think Dan's um, ran the message home. I think uh, Gavin's <laughs> hit the statistics. I'm going to hit the passion, as you said, Paul. The passion that we have as men, looking at our cars when we walk away. Does a woman do that? Does she lock her car and walk away and look back? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 And I forgot to add that we don't need to rely on cheap little signs either. <laughs> Does a woman sit in her garage with a glass of wine and admire the curves of her neighbors? <laughs> the sleep lines, the sex appeal. I'm talking about the car. Come on. This is the passion. That's my message there. I don't think you share it. It's a, it's a means of transportation for you. And I'll put, as Dan said, we're not referring to the three of you. We're talking about womanhood in general. Now the mechanical. The mechanical, we're driving along, we hear a noise, we hear the click, we're concerned. We do something about it. turn around to her male counterpart and say, honey, the car's broke. <laughs> we care for the car, we clean, we groom, we polish, we adore. I know a member, a good friend of mine of our opposition team, who not only leaves cat hair on both her convertibles, <laughs> purely to get a reaction from me. She went one step further. She put her pet goat in a boxer with hay, Photographed him and sent it to me. <laughs> the difference is also, hey guys, we know where the oil filter is, we know where the water filter is, the screen wash, that's stuff that the guys do in the What about cleaning the interior? Guys, you, you hop into the car, Said Mrs. has been in there. Do we see hand cream on the upholstery? Yeah. 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 Try to get the female polish off the leather. Yeah. We don't drive with our elbows doing our nails. Yeah. <laughs> Lipstick on the mirror. That's the one. But I do believe the notes were written on toilet paper with lipstick before this um, debate. Yeah. Anyway, look. Bottom line is, I'm going to come straight to it. Women don't care. Anyway, look, it's because we care. We treat a car as a work of art. Right? We, as I said before, we stand in the garage, we look at it, we admire it, we hear it, we love wine and chat to it. For a woman, it's a mode of transport. Of, of a lovely colour. This is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a woman will treat a Prada handbag better than her Porsche. <laughs> but she will still try and put a kitchen sink in the Porsche. <laughs> the reason men make better Porsche owners, look, the bottom line is we care about every facet. It is a machine. It is not something to get us to the shops. We do have three ladies here who are an exception to the rule. I will give you that. And, and you like your cars. So um, that's it. Look, that's all I can say. The guys are coming over there. We are passionate and we do look after our babies. All right? There's no argument. Throwing tickets at us is just not going to do it. <laughs> So you'll notice that I didn't have to ring a bell because actually it took too long. That's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> so look, there were, there were some really, really eloquent and some less eloquent arguments tonight. 
Um, I'd like to just summarise a little bit as to what people have said, and then we'll have a think about uh, whether it is true that women make better Porsche owners. So Michelle opened up by saying she didn't know the definition of a good Porsche owner. Um, she then said she followed Anne around Italy, um, and that's a stalker, not a Porsche owner. <laughs> Um, she said that men need a Porsche when we get to that age, and every man in the room knows that's actually true. <laughs> um, PCNZ doesn't stand for penis compensation. <laughs> she also talked about the fact that men take risks, and we do, we get married. <laughs> all her husband's speeding tickets. <laughs> I'd crawl under a fucking rock too. <laughs> and then Dad came along with a fresh, refreshing, young view, belying the way he looks. <laughs> he talked about facts and figures and not feelings, and I can sort of understand that. He, um, he then said he was expressing the view of all men, which is an arrogant, bloody thing to say. <laughs> um, he then highlighted the fact that the team had had several wives, and I'm not sure all of them were their own. <laughs> <laughs> and then he descended into this bookkeeping quagmire, <laughs> which showed it's not a passion, maintenance. He knows how passion should be for a car. He realises that colour matters, but he just kept quoting numbers. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, I'm an IT guy too. I don't like to see IT guys do this. <laughs> then the lovely, but then I was mentioned, small but perfectly formed, Anne's story. <laughs> she started, where do I begin? I thought she was going to launch into a Carpenter's song. <laughs> twice the risk per male. Um, and, and I just, I, I'll move on from that actually because it was fucking understandable. <laughs> um, she said, women are focused on economy and maintenance costs and everything. Well, that's not a Porsche thing either, so she crashed into the um, She said women are better at parking. Does anyone in the room believe that? <laughs> Fold. <laughs> uh, she says men need Portions. Excuse me. Speaking from experience, if there's a woman involved, she gets the final sale. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to get the final sale. Color. 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 Said women looked better with their tops down, but they didn't do anything to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gavin came along, oh. making the most of a toupee that had blown off the back of a boxer owner. <laughs> he said stuff about logic versus emotion. He said stats, facts. I'm sure he said speculum in there somewhere as well. <laughs> He said he'd asked a thousand Kiwis. I think he meant the little birds, and he made up the answers based on the little noises that they made. And then he said, percent, 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 percent. And I lost the will to live. 
And then to top it all off, I'm sure he said front transaxle. <laughs> Which, actually, I've never heard of. How do we know about these things? And then he talked about fuel and octane and diesel, and the only person I know that put diesel in a petrol car was Paul Higgins with his 356, and I'm sure none of the women have done that. And then he said, men do the research, but women help with the decision. And actually, we do the research, and then we ask them for the decision. <laughs> because it makes them feel involved. <laughs> Lisa came along with this incredible soft porn thing. <laughs> now, the only hole I can pick in Lisa's argument about if, if the cars were designed like the body curves of a female and everything, our Porsches should have boobs. That was the real <laughs> it was all sex, as far as Lisa's concerned. And, you know, friends, I'm quite jealous. Um, <laughs> that's what your life is like. <laughs> I know um, Brent's been doing some track days and he's got this really cool thing in his, in his GT3 that measures G-force, but um, at least he's thought it measured the G-spot. <laughs> and, and that's how she got him to buy the car. <laughs> and, and she also made some funny comment about a Porsche being your guy's best friend. Um, and again, I'm going to talk to you about that later, Lisa, and hopefully do some counselling between the two. <laughs> but I have a question for you, Lisa. You mentioned lubricant. <laughs> what lubricant do you use? Um, for the car, ballpark engine lubricant. And for, for the car, the ballpark, ballpark engine lubricant. Uh, uh, Pinot Green. Pinot Green. Pinot Green. <laughs> So I'd like to propose a toast to Lisa. <laughs> and I'd like to all chip in for a bottle of Pinot Gris for Brent, so it's lucky to have. <laughs> so then Ash came along. Good old Ash. Another person who's looking so much fucking older than when I last saw him. <laughs> I think um, he, he started with this Fifty Shades of Stuttgart thing. <laughs> He talked about how he looks at his car as he walks away and how he'll sit at the garage with a glass of wine and looking at his car. And how, in all, he treats a car almost better than a woman. And this would explain why his passenger seat is empty this weekend. <laughs> like some hand cream on his upholstery. <laughs> um, and wouldn't we all actually, wouldn't we? <laughs> he also pointed out that he's terrific at listening to when his car makes a noise what it means, but obviously not so with his woman. <laughs> made some funny comment about Michelle having a goat in the box, to, whereas I think Ashley's a goat in the Turbo S. <laughs> <laughs> so look, it's been a really balanced day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have received more, I wouldn't call them bribes, but yeah, I <laughs> than I would normally do on an evening like this, and for that I'm very grateful. And <laughs> um, but I'd like to really run through this and, and see if we can quantify can this in a way that can't be debated any further. Ashley, how many Porsches do you have? Two. Two. Gavin? One. Dan? Two. Two. That's five on the men's team. Lisa? Oh, sorry. Anne, how many do you have? One. One. Lisa? Six. Oh. Oh. Michelle? Four. Oh. So that's the lesson on the women's team.
So what I'd like to point out when announcing the winners, this was a maths debate. <laughs> I'd like to say, the Coven team, here's your conference, well done. You won the Thank <laughs> you.